Hi everyone, we are going to identify some of your fertility stressors in today's video. I'm Marl Salerno, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioner of ReclaimOptimalHealth.com, where I help couples just like you resolve their infertility and get back to creating those families you so deeply desire. And before we get started, if I can ask you to click on that subscribe link button down below so that you get notifications every Friday when I post these videos. And please come follow me on Instagram. I am at Marl Salerno, and you can find me there pretty much daily. I'm available to chat with you, support you, hear your story, answer your questions, and provide you with valuable functional fertility content. Okay, so identifying your fertility stressors. This is the number one thing that I see people fail at and one of the reasons why they are struggling with infertility is because they haven't actually spent the time to identify their stressors. And this is what I help people do. I help couples resolve their infertility by identifying their stressors. And I actually have a guide on this that you can click down in the link below. And it's called stress is the number one cause of infertility. And that's because it is, right? So stress and inflammation are two words for the same thing. So stressors cause inflammation and we know this inflammation affects our ability to conceive, to keep a baby growing in our bodies and have a healthy pregnancy and then bring a baby into the world. So we wanna really lower that inflammation, that inflammatory load. Now, I wanted this to be kind of like a workshop format video with you. So maybe get some pen and paper or something to write with that you can be able to uh, write down your stressors and work with it. So the first one I wanted to look at is your environmental stressors, okay? And your environmental stressors are looking at things like your self-care products, your household products, um, pesticides in your food, the quality of your water, looking at all those elements. I mean, you, you wanna go into detail, I'm being real brief here, but like laundry detergent, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, lotion, potion, makeup, you know, nail polish, the whole nine. And list as many of these as you can think of that you have no idea what the ingredients are in them. And you maybe already know they're probably pretty toxic, but you use them anyway. And what I want you to do is pick one or two of those that you are gonna turn around every week for the next month. So by the time the month is over, you're gonna have switched over anywhere between four to eight different products. And see how that feels. Feel like you're taking some action in lowering your inflammation. It's probably gonna feel pretty good. And you're gonna to get to learn what are in these ingredients. Like what are they? What are in these products? Now the second stressor that I want you to take a look at is your physical stressors. So this is definitely like looking at your diet, for example, looking at your food intolerances. And I have a video on this that I'll link to down below in the description box. But you wanna take a look at like, are you eating junk food? Like looking at the basics. Are you eating fast food? Do you eat out a lot? Do you even know what's in your food? Do you eat foods that are in boxes a lot, even if they're organic? So you really wanna to start to take a look at this and shift some of these things. Now with physical stressors, they tend to be a little bit more challenging. So I wanna give you some leeway with that. So I want you to pick one or two of these items that you write on your list to turn around in this next month, okay? And the physical stressors can actually have a huge impact. Oh, and one other thing to put in those physical stressors that I think is really important is if you're getting just a little bit of movement in a day, making sure that that happens. Okay, the third stressor is your mental, emotional, spiritual stressors. Now, we know that depression fans the flames of inflammation. And remember, we wanna lower inflammation because inflammation is the number one cause of infertility. So, 
we really want to take a hold and take care of your mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. So how do you do that? Well, firstly, it's when you're feeling the uncomfortable emotions, however minor or however large, but usually most of our days consist of the smaller emotions that are coming up. And then we, once in a while, we'll have more of these severe emotions that are coming up, but it depends on the person. You could be having a lot of these severe emotions, which I understand, especially dealing with infertility. And then what you want to do is you want to sit with the discomfort. You want to sit with the emotion and actually welcome it in. Don't try to get rid of it. Don't try to get busy so that you forget about it, but actually sit with it and breathe into it. And as you breathe into it, what I want you to do is recognize what is behind it. Start asking yourself questions. Why is this coming up? Why am I feeling this way? What does this really have to do with? And look at maybe if there's possibly maybe fears involved in this. Okay. It's not always fears, but maybe you have a fear that your partner is going to leave you because you can't have children, or maybe you'll never have children. Like bring up all of those fears. And I want you to write all of this down so that you can record it and you can come back to it. And I want you to write it out to yourself. Like you're your own best friend. You're your own cheerleader. And then once you write this all out, I want you to look at this and write it out and say to yourself, like, is this stuff really likely to happen? I mean, is this really going to happen? And sure, there's a bunch of plausibilities, right? But what would actually happen? And what we do know is that women and couples who put one foot in front of the other to improve their fertility more often times than not end up being able to have their baby. So you need to remind yourself of all of this. Okay. As you're going through this process and utilize these letters or these journalings to yourself so that when you have those more severe triggering moments of emotion that you're going to go to, you can actually pick these, these things up and read them. Not so that you have to forget what you're going through, but so that you can bring yourself back to reality. Okay. This is so important. You need to be your own cheerleader. So you need to have the evidence that you're your own cheerleader and help yourself. This is going to help you be able to be more resilient as you continue through your infertility struggle and reclaim your fertility. So I hope you all found this video very helpful. I hope you're able to identify now some of your environmental stressors, your physical stressors, and your mental, emotional, and spiritual stressors, write them down, pick a few and act upon them so that you can benefit your fertility and lower your inflammation and your stressors. If you're ready to push the fast forward button on all of this and you want to get some functional lab testing so you can identify your biochemical stressors and have somebody like me who is experienced working with couples and in infertility, identify all these stressors for you and help you work on them in a very loving and constructive and positive way. Then I'm your girl. <laughs> so click on that qualifying call link down below and I look forward to hearing from you. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.